this is Susan and I am bringing you a little how-to today and a little introduction of our brand new product from Amazing Crafting Products. This is the brand new Amazing Mold Rubber and I'm going to actually open it out of the box here for you and show you how it's mixed and I'm going to show you the beginning of a brand new project I'm working on. So this is the brand new box. This is a two-part silicone rubber product. So as you can see, this is what comes in here. The little instruction pamphlet. It's very easy. It's a very small little pamphlet. And basically it says uh, the mix ratio can be measured by weight or volume. Ten parts to one. Ten parts base to one part catalyst. And Or you can do the entire canister, which is this. This is the rubber base, it's white, and then also this is the catalyst. This comes in a little bitty bottle, it weighs nothing, so be very careful when you're pouring this because it feels like there's nothing in there, but there is. And then they give you a little measuring scoop and a couple of these little measuring cuppies. And you have to be very careful when you're using these little measuring cups because they do have measurements all the way around. They have it in tablespoons, they have it in ounces, they have it in drams, and they also have it in milliliters. So either when you're measuring with this product, the Amazing Mold Rubber, or if you're measuring the Amazing Clear Cast Resin or the Amazing Casting Resin, you need to be very sure when you're mixing the equal parts and using these little measuring cups that you're using the same measurements on each side of the cups. What I do is I mark them with the Sharpie, so I make sure I use the same measurements equally or I just use it to the top of the cup and then I'm good to go. So for this today I'm not going to be using the little measuring cups or this little measuring scoop. This little scoop is to measure out the proportions of the rubber base to the catalyst. This little measuring scoop is only for measuring the catalyst liquid and that's if you're measuring different amounts. If you are measuring say it says in the directions that if you're going to use a little scoop you would measure out one scoop of catalyst, this is that's pink liquid, to two fluid ounces of the rubber base. So two, flu two fluid ounces is, out of this little cup, two fluid ounces is actually two full little cups of this, according to the ounces on here. So what I've done is, I don't usually generally uh, measure out a large, a small amount. Uh, only I've been making large, large molds since I've got this. Uh, but what you can do is, I fill the little measuring cups with water, and this is a nine ounce plastic cup, and I have a whole bunch of these that I use for mixing my resin. So what I did is I poured two ounces for. So this is one ounce, two ounce, three ounce, four ounce. This is six ounces up to here. So I need to f fill rubber base on this cup to here six ounces then I would mix three scoops of the catalyst to get six ounces but today I'm going to mix the whole entire container which is 0 0.317 and a half grams which says 0.7 of a pound now you can also measure this by weight if you have a scale you can do it by weight I don't have a scale so I'm doing it the good old-fashioned way by measuring and they made this really easy so if you want to make the whole container which it goes really fast and I made a fairly large mold that I need to fill the second half of so I'll show you this because it's already cured so this is a tray and with the little bottles next to it you can sort of see this is about I would say about 10 inches long by maybe about 5 inches wide and I have two glass paperweights in there and I have some um, two brass buttons and I also have this little wood finding that sort of looks like a, a pitched roof but I think it was part of an earring so anyway I've already poured some in here and this was left over from another mold that I made I mixed up the entire container which the other mold used about I would say a little over half and then I poured the rest in here and the thing that's really great about this mold rubber is that it's self sealing to itself just like the amazing mold putty is so I have this mold already poured you can go ahead and keep layering so I'm whatever I have left over from this and I'm going to pour one other little thing today while I show you how to mix this up and if I still need 
to fill more on it, then I'll do a third pour. But I think two pours will get this. So I've left some space, and the only reason why I've filled in, I've filled in areas is because I didn't want to waste the valuable real estate here. I would have had an empty gap here. I would have had an empty gap here and here between these two larger objects. So um, I've, I'm going to have a big rectangular mold, so it doesn't matter where you have the items at. So as long as you can pop them out at the end, you're good. So I'm going to have two larger flat glass surfaces that's going to make me nice molds that I can maybe make for Christmas ornaments and do mixed media um, art with. And then I'm going to have these findings that I like the shape of, and I'm sure I'll use them a lot in my mixed media dimensional pieces. So the first thing you want to do is you want to prepare what you are going to make. And I have a great idea. It, those gelatin plates that everybody is all the rage for. Well, I have a great idea. I want to make myself a little gelatin plate. So I have one of my acrylic stamp blocks here. And this is just a plain old piece of acrylic. And it's, it's about three by four inches. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour myself an acrylic block. And how am I going to do this? Well, I'm going to do it the real down and dirty easy way. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap some tape around it. So I have some scotch tape here. I'm going to make a little wall. And I'm going to make the wall with scotch tape first because it's easy to manipula manipulate. And then I'm going to reinforce it with duct tape. And I know that the scotch tape will work because I tested this already on a different mold that I made for a stamp handle. I needed to make the wall higher, and so I did the same way. So all I'm going to do is wrap this around. And I'm going to burnish it really good when I'm done. So I need another piece. And you just need to make a wall barrier. I can do this with chipboard or, or other plastic. Um, but because it's so small, I think I can get away with this with the tape. You can use um, corrugated plastic or you can use some recycled plastic packaging. But you need to just make sure that you glue it on really good. And when you're placing your objects inside of a, of a structure that you're going to pour into, like I had that blue tray, you need to hot glue your objects down into the tray because the smaller objects will float in the silicone while it's still in its liquid state. It stays active. It does like to move around. It has the bubbles escaping it for, I would say, about a half an hour until it finally settles down and it likes to move. So it'll keep flowing around until it finally gets settled and it fully cures in about four hours. Now if it's a thicker mold like with my stamp handles, I did a stamp handle in a little mini cologne bottle side by side because I was going to have a lot of wasted space. This I left set overnight because it is so thick and dense there's a lot of solid area here, so you need to let those go a little longer. I let it go overnight and a little extra because I wanted to make sure that I wasn't going to ruin the objects that were on the inside. But the thinner molds, this stuff I poured, it's ready to go now. But I'm not peeling it out because obviously I'm going to pour again on top of it. But I have another mold here. This one, see how flexible it is? You want to, four hours you could get this out. This one I poured into a leftover um, soup container lid that came from some takeout food. And it was the perfect thickness. It was about a half an inch thick. And I just hot glued my objects into there. And you see I have one, two, three, four, five objects here. Um, a couple of them didn't work out well because um, I'll explain that in a, another how-to later. Um, but I did get four objects out of this that were usable out of the six. So, And it's really flexible. It's very detailed. It's fantastic. Um, I love it. So today I'm attempting to make my own DIY faux gelatin plate. And so I have the tape around this. I think 
I think I can probably get away without doing this. Maybe I'll just go around with one more layer of tape because I just need to make a wall to fill because this scotch tape is pretty thick. You just have to gauge, gauge what your tool is and you just want to make sure that it's not going to seep out the sides. It's not going to seep out here onto the bottom. You don't want, you don't want the silicone to leak out. Next time I do this, I'm going to attempt to make it. If this works, now I'm making this with the anticipation that the end result is going to be a usable functional jelly plate, jelly-like plate. There is a licensed product called the jelly plate, but I've seen a lot of DIY on how to make one with physical Knox gelatin and you know what? That takes a long time and makes a lot of mess. I don't want to mess around with this. And when I got my hands on this new amazing mold rubber, oh boy, that was the first thing I wrote down to make. And so I'm sharing it with you first. So I'm just using a bone folder here. I'm just burnishing this down on the edges so that I have a very good seal and no liquid rubber is going to leak out. And so I just have a post-it note on the bottom of this just so it's not so reflective so you can see it. And I'm just going to leave this set here on a piece of recycled cereal box for messiness factor. And I want this on my counter. Now another tip that you would want to do, and this is good for this product, the Amazing Mold Rubber, and also the Amazing Casting Resin or the Amazing Clear Cast Resin, is I keep a little bit of rubbing alcohol in a spray bottle. It's so much easier to get this out and clean up your hands or clean up a spill with it in a spray bottle than a big giant tub of, big giant bottle of alcohol, how it comes. So this is just a little spray bottle I got at the dollar store in the travel, um, you know, where they have uh, the beauty supplies. They have these little travel containers that you can use for traveling, and that's where I got this. And that's what's in here, rubbing alcohol. And it, it is a godsend. It will clean up all this stuff, all the products, rubbing alcohol is your friend. I also keep a pumice stone by the sink so in case I've got any little dried bits. But the silicone rubber, you don't have that problem. It's just a little bit of a sticky mess. So I'm going to put this on the side. Uh, it does look pretty clean so I don't need to... You want to make sure that you clean your surface very good if you've got any fingerprints or drips on it or anything. I had already cleaned it before I started so it looks pretty good now. I'm just going to set it on the side. So now I'm going to open up the rubber base. You need an exacto knife or something to get this open because it doesn't have a pull-off tab so I just cut a hole in it and peel it off. This does get a little messy because it's on the inside of the lid. It's a little bit drippy uh, and I just run around the inside of it with the exacto knife and peel it off. Easy as that. And I'll get that off my exacto knife later. <laughs> but I do need it for the catalyst. You want to shake up the catalyst very well before you pour it in. And I'm going to pour the entire, I'm going to mix up this entire canister. I'm going to pour in the entire bottle of the catalyst into the container and just mix it right in the container. It makes your life easy. You just want to make sure you shake this up really good in case there was any separation of it. It also has a little foil seal on the inside so it doesn't leak. I'm doing the same thing on this one. And my favorite tool to mix with, either a plastic spoon or a plastic knife. And this is nice because it's got a little serrated edge because you use it to scrape off the sides of the container. Um, and it's got a nice flat edge too, so you can really get all of it out of the container. And if you want to see how much you can actually get out of the container, this is my previous mix. I let it dry, so then I'm just going to peel out the rest and recycle my container. It is scraped clean. There is no waste here. So <laughs> I have a lot of fun with this. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to gently pour the catalyst in. It's 
nice bright gum pink, bubble gum pink. So that's all done. I don't recycle this little bottle. That little guy is going to have to go in the garbage, but I will recycle this larger container because I can. And then you're just going to gently stir, stir it completely. I sort of stir it in a folding fashion. So I bring up what's at the bottom to the top. So all of it gets mixed together thoroughly. It starts to get a little bit thinner as you're mixing it. And the catalyst gets incorporated with the rubber base. And it, you just have to mix it for a few minutes and then you're ready to go. As soon as you see that there's no more swirls in the mixture, it will turn more of a light baby pink, real, real pastel, very light, not like it was when we first put it together. I'll hold it up a little bit. And I can see I've got, sort of looks like strawberry ice cream now. But I promise, and I'm sorry to report, it's not food safe, so you can't use this stuff to make food molds. But guess what? The mold putty is, so continue on having fun like that. <laughs> but there are some other interesting things that you can do with this stuff that you can't do with the mold putty. And I'll be sharing those things with you later, because we have been doing a lot of experimenting with this brand new product, and it has been quite exciting. So I'm so excited that we're finally able to share all this stuff because we've been having to keep it under wraps for quite a while. So I see a little bit. I'm just going to scrape the edges now to make sure I got everything off the sides because on the side, on the one side, I can see that I have a little white still in there. And when you select a plastic utensil to use, make sure that it's one that you know is not going to break in half right when you start using it. This is one that I think I got from a Chinese restaurant. These things are in, these things bend in half. They never break in half. So I don't eat out too often, but I do save a couple of utensils that I know that I'll be using for stir mechanisms later on. And the thing that's nice is that after this dries, I can peel off the dried silicone off of it and use it again. Not like the resin. The resin, a couple, I let it harden a couple of uses. I have to th throw that away because it just gets too thick and crusty with the resin on it. So here we go. This is all done. You see that it's a very light pale pink. Problem is the camera doesn't like to focus on light colored things. Now you see that the air bubbles are starting to escape on their own. That is perfectly fine. Now you can let it rest for a minute or two to let the bubbles rest. Um, all I'm going to do is I'm going to get my mold over here ready to pour in. And I'm going to start pouring uh, because the bubbles will continue to escape until it fully starts to solidify. About I would say about 20 minutes to a half an hour where it really starts getting stiff to where you, you're beyond your pour, pour window. So, but this is getting good now. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm bringing back my little mini attempted jelly plate. Okay. And I'm just going to let it flow in. And I'm going to let this go. It's about a half an inch thick. And I'm making one this size because I'm really interested. I love to stamp and stuff and stamps. I would want to make a big one, but I wouldn't want to use a big one all the time. Um, sometimes I want to use a small one. So I figured if this works out, then I have a bunch of different acrylic blocks in different sizes. I would make one this size and then I have one that's about twice as big. Um, I poured, I have a lid that I've put aside to make one larger that's about six by eight maybe so if I maybe about tw two of these wide by one high um, so you can see that the bubbles are starting to dissipate and rise to the top you could tap them out now if there's any larger bubbles you can poke them out with a pin or just blow them with some air but they'll continue to rise to the top and pop on their own after this sets up a little bit I'm not going to tip it over because it's going to come right out. 
but the air bubbles rise to the top of the mold now when your mold is finished if there's bubbles at the top that doesn't matter what's important is what's on the inside where your object is so with this I had to put a little stick down in there to constantly help because there's detail down in there I wanted to make sure that the bubbles didn't stay down in the in the recesses where the detail of the objects were because here's the little bottle it has some detail there maybe a bubble might have gotten caught around the neck there so I wanted to make sure that that didn't happen so this looks pretty good I'm gonna pour a little bit extra in here because I have a little ways to go it's settled down a little bit this does not get thicker how it is when you pour it in there it, that's how it's gonna be it doesn't thin down so there's no shrinkage so what you pour is what is going to be the end result and my sidewalls seem to be handling pretty good my corners are bowing out but you know what I don't particularly care about that I'm doing it cheap and easy here that's what I can that's what my that's what my uh, focus is on okay so I'm gonna move this to the side and now the rest of this that I have in the container I'm going to pour here now this may not fill up this mold this time because this is my will be my second pour but I think that I might have I might be able to fill it all if not I'm gonna have to get some more <laughs> so I'm just gonna continue pouring and I'm gonna let it flow over the objects naturally we'll see how it goes and you just want to gently pour it over the objects and let it flow naturally down the sides it will fill in it will keep moving and flowing and fill in all the possible gaps that it can find so this is the fun part where I get to fight the container to get it out but you see it's easy to mix up it's easy to use and how many minutes have I been talking to you I've gone through a con whole container of mold rubber just like that so looks like I might have to do one more pour on top of this because you want to have about a quarter of an inch of the mold rubber on top of your objects as a, uh, as a strengthening so that when you pour your castings they don't they don't punch through so you want to have a nice strong mold so that's it empty container so this is just going to continue to fill in see all the bubbles are popping up because there's some little um, voids underneath these two glass paperweights where it's going to soak in underneath where around where I put um, I put some uh, I put some tape to hold those down some big sections of duct tape rolled over so um, those are holding those suspended from the other side I have one little bit left so I'm gonna set these aside and clean up the little bit of stickiness on my hand which is not much just on the knife that I touched and let this set for four hours and then we'll see how it goes from there so thanks for joining me and we'll catch you with the end result in a little while